And we are live. Welcome to episode 173 of the DCP SideQuest podcast. This week we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. I'm going to I'm going to wait. I know I know the hot topic right now is of course Street Fighter 6. I know. I'm going to wait till the end of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. You know, keep yeah. them waiting, right? Keep, keep them waiting. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. So Final Fantasy 16. Yeah. That's the really embargo. the big news, right? The embargo has lifted. People have played it. You've been watching mm -hmm. watch you've been watching videos all day about it, right? I've been watching videos <laughs> all morning because yeah, they they had a bunch of people play anywhere between 4 and 6 hours of Final Fantasy 16. So they got to play a pretty decent chunk of the beginning of the game. Did they start from the beginning like like, I believe so. It sounds like there were like little there were save files that had different abilities on them. Mm -hmm. But so it was like, here's the story part of the game. Here's the open part of the game. Here's combat part of the game. So they really wanted to make sure that people could experience like each piece of what the game has to offer. But yeah, that's all at the beginning of the game. Yeah, according to IGN, they say it was a special version made for media to experience and contents may differ from the final version. Oh, interesting. So I, you know, that, my only thought on that was like, uh, it, I don't know if it's how the game plays out or not. There might be reports on if they asked them if it's roughly how does the pace of the game go or what I was wondering, did they just pack all the good stuff into like four hours and then you're like, right, well, they like spread that over 60 hours. Final Fantasy. <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't read um, much <laughs> of the me, previews. To me, it so. sounds like what they meant by that it's a special version for people previewing it is that they wanted people to be able to experience all the sections yeah. of the game so it's so you get to experience combat and you get to experience story because it sounds like the beginning part of the game is very story cutscene based and they didn't want uh, all of your play time to just be that <laughs> yeah exactly and that's pretty that. common they just sort of skip you around yeah. and that's the point is i i don't yeah. think it's like the first four hours or anything like that but um yeah pieces of something I really like when games just like drop you into the combat and then like they save like a couple of cutscenes, you know, so you're not just yep. watching a movie like for the first hour of your time with a game because, you know, sometimes you just well, want to play yes. a video game. <laughs> for sure. Oh, I yeah. always do. And well, so with this game, it's really interesting because Final Fantasy has always sold well in Japan, of course, but the large number of their sales is from the Western world mostly sure. english speaking countries so with this game the creators of final fantasy 16 wrote the script in japanese to show like you know generally what kind of story they want to do and then instead of having their english people just translate it and localize it they had them just basically rewrite the script to be more authentic for english speakers interesting so it might make sense yeah this time. <laughs> that's hey they're going for they said that they are deeply inspired by game of thrones so it's okay. game of thrones it's final fantasy game of thrones is kind of what's going on so it's gonna it's, start awesome and end with a whimper <laughs> <laughs> let's see how it goes um it is uh so all of the voice acting is all different regional dialects from England. So if someone is from the north in Final Fantasy, the Final Fantasy world, they're going to have a northern British accent. Oh, that's cool. So they're, they're really trying to sell like the authenticity of the world and the voice acting, all of that, all of it was done in English first and then put into Japanese. Hmm. So the story sounds like it's going to be pretty good. And it's the first ever mature Final Fantasy. That's your rating. This Everything I hear about this game is hitting for me. You know what I mean? It's like right. it's hitting the things that I like out of video games. And I, I'm honestly more excited for this Final Fantasy game than I've ever been for a Final Fantasy game, which is kind of crazy because yeah. there's been some bangers. There have been some bangers. <laughs> this one does. It seems a little different. You know, you've got the people who were in charge of turning Final Fantasy 14 around. They came in and made it the crazy popular game that it is. That's the you've MMO one, they, right? Yes. Okay. You've got the people behind Devil May, May Cry Combat doing the combat. And everyone in the previews, by the way, people are like, combat is real good. It's sharp. Yeah. It's precise. It's fun. So, yeah, we're hearing really good things about combat, story, visuals. Yeah, I mean, that's the big interesting thing about Final Fantasy 16 is it is uh, more of a departure in that it's, like, so focused on that action, you know, real-time combat versus... You know, Final Fantasy VII Remake was mixing um, things, and this is even more focused on just going, like, crazy, yeah, like Devil May Cry-esque um, in this Final Fantasy 
setting. Um, I, I mean, everything, yeah, every time I see footage of the combat, that's what excites me. And, you know, I was curious if, Briar, if that was what excited you or just, was everything. it just the style? Like the totally, yeah, the style definitely has to be more excited. Way better than, like, you know, a, a group of boys in a car traveling <laughs> around the interstates. Like, <laughs> Final Fantasy XV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it, to me, like, that's part of getting into, like, a game in the world is, like, you know, the world has to interest me. It has to, like, speak to, like, you know, either stuff that I like or stuff that I think I might like, you, you know, in this game, just every time yeah. they show something, it's like, Oh, that looks cool. I want to see that. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Like, and it just, you know, it's, it looks like darkier, darker and edgier, you know, it just looks fun. It looks cool. It does. Yeah. yeah. And then you have like the, the kind of icon battles where you get to have Shiva and Ifrit and all these against each other. And we found out that in the world, there are people who are blessed with the powers to call on the powers of Ifrit, the powers of Shiva. Um, but <laughs> there's some people who get to use those powers willingly. But then there's also, if you are maybe not a highborn person, um, you are kind of forced into essentially slavery to fight for the kingdom using the powers that you were oh, blessed with. Oh, that's a with. bummer. It's definitely a little dark. You know what they called? They called the bastards. <laughs> they I really know, love like... game of thrones you're right <laughs> uh what's in the reading previews did you did they say anything about like the openness of the world or anything like that yeah so definitely the beginning part was very like straightforward kind of taking you through it and mm -hmm. they said the open world feels more akin to like god of war than like a true open world where there clearly is like a path that they're kind of taking you yeah. down but there's little kind of branching that you can do to find hidden stuff hidden items stuff okay. like that that's what i was mostly expecting um yeah just given the nature of like how frenetic the combat is and everything so right you know i don't think i'm gonna mind i'm super excited for final fantasy 16 it's been one of my most anticipated yeah. just you know based on yeah the the icon versus icon footage but just the combat every time i see the combat which is what i get into is um obviously all the things you're going to be able to do in terms of i think customizing how you play and what you get into um and hopefully all the weapons that you pick up and everything i think it's going to be awesome yeah. So is the combat like Devil May Cry where it's like kind of that combo based, like fast paced action? That's what it looks like. Yeah. Um, it's not like pure, just straight up Devil May Cry. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a mixture of that and Final Fantasy in particular. Um, okay. But yeah, so some of the negatives that I've heard. Uh -oh. um, so the way that you customize your difficulty in this game is that you equip accessories that can make you like auto parry. It can make you take less mm. damage. It's got like a bunch of items that you can equip. Now, Sweet. That, when I first saw <laughs> that, I was like, that actually sounds like a really good way to do difficulty. Yeah. But the, they are accessories, which means they take up an accessory slot. So you may be missing out on some of the more fun or interesting accessories in the game if you really need like, you know, the auto parry or this one that makes your dog automatically attack. Being alive is fun, too. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see what people might get a little upset about, like, why do I have to miss out on the accessories of the game? Because, you know, I need the game to be easy. It sucks to suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so is that. Um, and then the other thing that I heard that I only heard Maximilian dude talk about is that in performance mode currently, now the build is not finished, it's not not complete, but in performance mode, combat is 60 FPS. Exploring the world is 30 FPS. Interesting. So, so you're walking around the world and it's 30 FPS and then it goes to combat and it immediately switches to 60 FPS. That sounds like it's gonna be jarring. It does sound a little jarring. Well, you know yeah. what's interesting though, at least, you know, it's going to make the combat portion seem, hopefully, and if it runs well, it'll make them suddenly seem, like, really intense. And, like, you'll you'll feel every time you enter combat, like, going to 60. Yeah. Um. So at least it's not the reverse, obviously, which I think would be would a be huge worse. problem, right, is where it's running. <laughs> and then combat, the, the part you need the most. So at least that, I would say, is a silver lining on that, but also why hopefully this is not yet another crap PC port. Well, it's not on happening. PC, so get wrecked. Oh, that's right. It won't be until, well, it will be later, but right later, now. Yeah. Is They're it not really? worrying. It's only, it is a PS5 exclusive 
um, I thought it was only console. Oh, it's not even the, PS4. Yeah, it's maybe. only PS5. Nope. Oh, only PS5. I didn't know that. So the whole 30 FPS, 60 FPS thing, like they did say that an early, a way earlier build that they played was only 30 FPS and this one was 30 and 60. So they're kind of yeah. hoping that it keeps going and it can all get to 60. Um, but we'll see. Hey, at least the combat is 60. Thank God. Does it do that thing where it plays music and loads your characters and the bad guys into like a special like combat zone? <laughs> no, it doesn't look like it does that. So how does it, does it just like, how does it switch between the two frame rates? Like You're you in just, combat. It's 60. You just run across an enemy and the game switches to 60? Oh, it must. Like, oh, I it must. must. When you, like, pull out this your weapon, bad guy. I guess. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay. pull out your weapon. It must you zoom in or something. And if it doesn't load, it must zoom in or something. I don't know. Maybe there's footage of there, that transition happening. But, yeah, that is unfortunate. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, you know, I'd say it was one of those things for me that, as much as it sounds a little disappointing, until you play it and experience it, like, you know, we'll see. Yeah, it's because we've been playing Zelda 24 frames a second and, you know, loving it, to be fair. It's it's definitely dis disappointing when it is like a PS5 exclusive, right? And it's like you're only making it for PS5. So it would yeah, be nice if you could get we knew 60. this day was coming. We knew the 60 FPS on the PS5 wasn't going to last forever, right? Like eventually they were going to be like, well, All we don't have to support the PS4 anymore. It. So let's really amp up. You know, we're going to use Unreal Engine 5 That's and make true. this thing look yeah. amazing. It's going to look awesome in screenshots, but it's going to run at 30. I like that. You know, you, yeah, you're on something there that they're like, let's just bump up everything else. Oops, we can't hit 60 now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. And like ray tracing yeah. and all that stuff. Like, yeah. While we've been in this like kind of weird period where like there hasn't been any PS5 exclusive games, it's all been like, you know, cross gen. So. It, Everything that runs at yeah. 30 on PS4 can run 60 on PS5, which has been nice True. for PS5 owners, but it can't last forever. Yeah. But um, everyone seems really happy. Like, I've watched so many videos and everyone's like, the story is doing great. The voice acting is amazing. The syncing of like the, the lip sync is great. Combat is great. Visually looks amazing. Um, so yeah, I've only heard a few things. Oh, the other negative was that you can't rebind your keys in the game. Uh, keyboard and mouse. It's no. a PlayStation well, exclusive. Oh yeah, well, you can plug in. A, you could plug in a keyboard and mouse. Get PC <laughs> out of your mind, guys! Stop it! It's not there. I don't <laughs> think of rebinding my keys when I think of controller. I, th I think of buttons. Try playing Zelda, and yeah, I don't know. This is I, the thing I, that I, I was like, Zelda. Zelda doesn't allow you to do that. But yeah, at it's least crazy. Well, you can like change a bright... jump button in Zelda. No, you have to change it through the system menu. You can't. No, you, you can literally... change it right. You can change the button, the jump button from. Uh, B to Y or Y to B. Y to B? They let you do one of the buttons and not... Anyway, <laughs> you can't rebind Zelda buttons except for apparently one, which I don't understand. Yeah, but. just a jump button because having the jump button on X is just fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> I would really like games, yeah, to just let us rebind some stuff. That'd be nice. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't pick the right settings and I want to change them. Yeah, is there a system wide rebinding on the Nintendo Switch? I know there yeah, is. Yeah, you have to do a system level. You can rebind yeah. anything on the okay. system level, but then everything yeah. on your system level is changed. Yeah, you have to go. In, if confusing. you're playing more than one game at the, at the same yeah. time, you're gonna have to the, switch constantly. The, yeah, the problem with that is the game doesn't know what you did, and so therefore yes, it won't make sense. It'll say press A, and you're like, oh, oh okay. that's what I'm doing in Zelda, and it's it's broke my mind. So I gotta double check what you just mentioned because. Yeah. If you could do that one button, that might actually that, that might be what I ended up doing. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah. it just swaps the two. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's that's so, what they said as well, is you know, they rebind some stuff in the in the PlayStation menu, but then a quick time event popped up and it's like press R one and they're like, mm. So yeah, that's crazy that it doesn't support key rebinds. No. But did they have but at least a brightness buttons. slider? They, they were having a problem with it. <laughs> Um, there, That's gonna bother someone you. mentioned that there was a triangle <laughs> button. I can't remember what it's for because I think circle is for your magic. Triangle might be your kind of icon ability because you carry, say, Ifrid and Garuda, you carry them with you and then you can use like some of their abilities just whenever you want. Oh, um, it might, that might have been triangle, but I'm not totally okay. sure. But yeah, they're like, it's maybe it's a little awkward to like use some, you have to press your attack button and triangle or your attack button and circle uh to do some of the attacks so i don't really understand this that like how in spending hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars do we still arrive in 2023 like yeah sorry you can't remap your buttons 
it, yeah. it is like I, I like seriously it's, I know. Right? it's yeah, absurd I to me like it's funny like i it, i don't get triggered by the 30 frames world and the <laughs> 60 frames combat you'd think that'd be what well, you should if you're gonna be bothered by something but no like that's somewhat understandable to me where i'm like how difficult is it to put a team together to let you remap buttons uh, to me it's it's a base thing but um it whatever, seems like it man. should be supportive you know like, speak up about it seriously though like speak up about it if it bothers you because that's the problem they they deem like eh, nobody really cares it's not needed it's not an accessibility problem but it is it is and yeah. they, they it's just don't do the research and or care enough it seems it's like playstation and xbox should be making a policy like hey to release yeah. a game on playstation it has to have remappable controls that way it works with our accessibility controllers which they both now have right they yep. do yeah that's true yeah absurd to me absurd absurd <laughs> good afternoon yeah. that's it i'm not playing it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not excited anymore um the only other thing that i learned is that so they do a pretty cool thing where they have live lore so you can interact lore. with live lore or not interact with live lore. so What's when a cutscene is when a cutscene's playing you can choose to read something that tells you more about the characters more about what they're talking about in the cutscene. Oh, interesting so okay. you can choose to not have that if you don't care about diving deep but if you do you can dive deeper so, so it's, it's a way of doing it, like it like without prompt? uh yeah i think so does it pause Prior, the maybe... cut scene? yes oof uh, so. yikes I mean, so how else are you going to read while was... you're watching a cutscene, Briar? Why would you want to read? How else are you going to Why do? would you want to read this thing on your Meaning it's your choice. You can obviously go. Cutscene. I'm going to assume you the can go back is, to it. The problem is, is that I'm going to want to read all of them, but I'm going to keep interrupting these cutscenes. Like, and then I'm going to like. It, it's going to be in a log, I'm sure. I'm like sure Zelda. Okay, okay, I'm okay. sure, okay. I'm sure it will be a, a log. All right. I like that. That'd be funny if it was a one-time thing. I want to If you don't hit it now, you'll never see it. Watch the cutscene. No, I'm sure it's both. But You'll have to watch a video about it on the internet. Assume. Maybe it's like in Fight Club, right? You ever seen Fight Club? I don't talk you know, about Fight Club. When, when, <laughs> when the camera's panning across the price of everything in the apartment, yeah. that's what it's like. You just see little notes. Oh, okay. Ifrit is worth $1,200. All right. <laughs> Um, besides Exciting. that, it's definitely, definitely more action based. Um, people were saying that they're not actually really seeing much of the RPG in their preview of the game. So, hmm. you know, Final Fantasy has RPG. pretty deep RPG stuff. In this game, it's more akin to an action game where you're getting, you know, whatever currency they give you to level up to get new abilities, new moves, make the moves more powerful. It's more kind of that upgrade system. And then, of course, you do have accessories and weapons and stuff. Well, now every game I feel is like RPG. RPG is so broadly used as a term, though. Like, to yeah, me, that means, is. like, yeah. wait, what do you mean? Do you talk about, are you talking about what exactly when you say RPG? Well, you can upgrade you your Buying character. equipment? <laughs> is that what you're saying, Watts? Like, um, you see what I mean? How would you define the thing that it's not as well, much? Well, comparing it to Final Fantasy, right? Because well, this but is a Final I think Fantasy game. Turn-based combat when you say that, have, though. Well, that's not, that's just turn, that's just turn based. It's not like. Well, I know, but that's what I'm asking. Like, what would it be that would make it more RPG, for example? The material system, the leveling up like individual stats, like you can get plus defense, plus attack. There's none saying... of those little kind of boosts that you can put into your character and customize all of that. You can unlock new abilities and you can make your abilities like a bit better, but very akin to what you would Really? So like equipping game. stuff is not going to like up your stats based on what you've read. I'm sure if you get it better. So see what I mean? It'll, like do more damage, but. No, know, but I meant like having stats. Yeah, it, does, it sounds yeah, like I, I didn't know. Yeah, it doesn't no have tinkering stats. There's no tinkering of the stats. Interesting. Huh. From what they've seen okay. so far, there's no tinkering of the stats. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to read more than just a little bit of uh, one of the previews. So I'm still flying blind. Uh, interesting. What's the release date? I don't know. June twenty second. Hmm? That's close. It's yeah, very I mean, soon. We're, yeah, there's not very enough time. We're a month away. The, like, there's no time to play <laughs> everything out there. But crazy. Zelda, Diablo, and yeah. Final Fantasy sixteen June all releasing in a row is a disaster. Street Fighter 6. And Street Fighter <laughs> Six. No, it's true. You're right. You got to make yeah, a choice. June, June is packed. Good news is, is yeah. you're playing like Season of the Deep if you're a Destiny player, and then if you're playing Early Access on Diablo, which you probably are, you're playing it a week later. Yeah, I mean, good news is that you have games to last you through to you're go you're going to need to get into late October and November probably before you know other stuff like that. I mean, Starfield is was that October nineteenth or something, or was that? I'll double check, but um, 
yeah, you've got a ways to go. You you have plenty to stretch out. I'm not holding my breath to play that one on day one. <laughs> I think Starfield is September sixth, actually. Jeez. So hopefully with no um, delays. Yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to to Starfield, but I'm not like gonna like go crazy if it's a little bit broken at day one. <laughs> you know it will be because it's yeah. Bethesda, but it will sell it will truckloads, and you know. Yeah. I'm I'm assuming it will be just like Skyrim, which was broken as crap, but everybody loved it, and eventually they fixed things. Yeah, um, but we'll see. You know, we'll see. It it, it does <laughs> suck though. It be <laughs> yeah, it's got to suck. Like Bethesda makes really ambitious games that are really yeah. influential. Unfortunately, they tend to launch in sort of that weird, just janky state. They always have. Um, yeah, but inevitably there's a lot of people that love them so, i mean i have high yeah. confidence in starfield i bring it up because it's funny destin Legary over at ign wrote a piece about it's like xbox's last i don't want to misquote the headline but um, xbox is dead last if chance, starfield fails it was no no that was it it was his, <laughs> xbox's last chance at redemption i think so xbox is going through its destiny arc right now where it's make or break <sighs> it is it's, it's not been easy <laughs> like for like xbox fans no, it's been it's been a little rough for sure. But Red, yeah, Redfall set that off because we just wanted to win, you know. <laughs> yeah, and it was and like I realized that after um, that I, Redfall. I think I maybe I said it on last week's show already. I think I said that about how it seemed like oh, it's just like another thing and like a really huge lineup of mini games to come and like, but it's not. There was the hits on Halo and delays on this and Redfall is already delayed and they bought all this stuff and that's going to make the catalog better. And I was just looking at Redfall like, well, you know, look, Arcane's like not the, you know, they're not like the biggest studio in the world, but they are a high polished studio. Um, they're always more artistic and like, you know, it wasn't, it was a miss, but um, I ended up beating it and it, it had its moments towards the end. that was like, okay, but um, it was a miss. But anyway, did you get realized after beating it? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm sure Does you do. Does Xbox do the thing where it tells you like what percentage of people boop, boop. have gotten that achievement? Oh, I don't think so, but uh, that's a good question. Yeah, <laughs> how many people got that achievement <laughs> that started? It. But anyway, the point is, yeah, Redfall. It turned out was like it, even if you nobody played it and was an Xbox fan, they would have been. They were wanting it to be good, even if they weren't going to play it, because they just wanted something to hold up and say, hey, we're yeah. on our the right track. And it so that's why the bad time too. It was just yeah. like not a great time to be yeah, a kind of a ex below expectations Xbox game. Yeah, I think Xbox showcase June eleventh at ten AM. A lot riding on that one. Yeah. Oh, Hollow Knight. Speaking of Xbox showcase, Hollow Knight Oh uh right. uh Silk Song got delayed, unfortunately. And that, that was mm -hmm. kind of everybody was expecting that by yeah. now, basically, because it was in last year's Xbox showcase where they said every game we're showing will be out within a year. Yep. Um, yeah, they came out and said that, look, it's not ready. We've been making it bigger and bigger. We're adding to it, which is actually what happened with the original Hollow Knight. They just kept building and building and building. And it ended up being an incredible game. So yeah. they don't even have a release date. It's just like it's going to be ready when it's ready. We're making it bigger and better. So Okay. I'm impatiently <laughs> waiting for it. Yeah, I'm like, okay, that's, I mean, I mean your game's going to be good. What can I do about it? Yeah. Do you really want it between Zelda and Street Fighter I don't want and Diablo it right now. and Final Fantasy? Do you really want it right now, Briar? I don't, we just I talked don't about right this. Now. I will take it right now. If they You'll gave it to it right me right now, now I'll take it. <laughs> oh, I be, really like the rough. first one. I really like it. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Game. I played through that game twice. I played it once on the PC when it first came out, and then I played it on the Switch again. I really enjoyed it. What else we got today? Well. A lot. There's always <laughs> a lot out there. There's well, the, do you want to go into the PlayStation conference? Yeah. So, oh, the show, the PlayStation show thing? Yeah, is that tomorrow yeah, I mean, or it's, the next day? It is it's 1 p.m. Wednesday. Pacific Wednesday. time okay. on Wednesday. So by the time, yeah, like, it's it's going to be out there soon. What time is it right news. now for you guys? It's it's. It's, like 12, it's one. It's basically two days exactly from now, almost. Okay. All right. Yeah. So yeah. four o'clock. Forty-eight right. hours from recording this. Okay. Yes, and this is so. There's been rumors that this is, but this is the big one that people have been like, you know, hearing rumblings about for a while, 
And hearing that it's over an hour, and this isn't like a stage show, right? This is like trailer, trailer, announcement, announcement, announcement. Yeah. So an over an hour of just nonstop, like, new release, here's an update, is uh, I'm super excited yeah, for that. And they There's said it's all PS5 of... and PSVR 2 games, right? No PS4 yeah. in here. That's what There's they said. probably cross stuff. Or they said focused, I think. I'll double oh, check the language. Oh, okay. But I, I, we're not expecting it to be very focused at all on anything PS4. It's definitely about... The PlayStation the 5 gen. and then PSVR. There's a lot of games I'm hoping to hear about. I'm what hoping to hear, hear about? more about Stellar Blade, Booty Souls, mm -hmm. Booty, Booty Souls. Nier, which Nier was already. <laughs> um, that one I'm hoping to hear more about. It's a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to get a release date. That would be incredible. Um, yeah. There's, there's rumblings of Bloodborne. <laughs> Of course. Not. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've I just been <laughs> speculating because I, I yeah. it, you can continue to, it will happen. What I've said about Bloodborne Remake at this point, now my language has changed from Bloodborne Remaster to over the past, you know, I'd say year and a half, it's changed to like, it's got to be a remake because it's absurd, right? It's one of the top selling PlayStation hits and they didn't do what they did with like Last of Us and Ghost of Tsushima. And like it would have made total sense, right? Upgrade a PS5 version. Like the fact yeah. that it doesn't exist is extremely bizarre. Everybody yeah. wanted to make excuses for a long time about, well, they're busy with Elden Ring. And I, which I always said, I'm like, guys, like <laughs> putting a team together to get hit 60 frames. Like, yeah, it would take some of their time. But now you see how big Elden Ring was and that they're uh, working on Armored Core. There was no reason that they couldn't tackle that if they really wanted to. So I, I'm speculating it is a remake. This would be a great moment, even if it's coming, you know, next year. But Demon's Souls was now, it'll be, I think, three years old this year. So you think yeah. about that, usually about three years. Plus, they're working with remade material. Demon's Souls obviously did a ton technically. Where does but the time go? Demon's Souls is happen. three years old, the remake? <laughs> I'm, yeah, I think it came out in... Uh, and I played I that on release. And that wow, it does not feel like three years ago. Hey, am I doing? I don't make sure I get my math right. You know, no, it I, is. It is. Hey, two, three. I'm gonna yeah. go out and say a in blue point remake of Bloodborne. That would be. I'm cool. hoping it. It just makes sense at this point, doesn't I'd it? I'd be very excited. Do we know what blue point is working on? No, I, I don't know. No, we right. don't. Okay. This, this has been one of the rumors. Um, I don't know if they've been attached to. The other big rumor is a Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. Yes. There's been numerous leaks for numerous years. And also just that Konami's been spinning back up. Um, there's been rumors about like yeah. even Castlevania stuff. But, but Metal Gear Solid is the big one, which honestly makes a lot of sense. Like Just because Kojima left, that is like a huge thing. And it's a huge PlayStation thing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I ha I'm feeling like, yeah. I think that's going to be the talk of this. This, re I mean, if they have Metal Gear and Bloodborne, and you know, Spider Man Two, and like, I mean, it's going to be crazy. Um, and, you know, I'm not a PlayStation fanboy, as they say. I do like PlayStation a lot because, as a brand, they've really impressed me over decades. Right? I mean, look at the catalog right. and doing yeah, things like a new IP with Ghost of Tsushima and it being like Ooh, awesome. The best game, right? <laughs> yeah, very hard really to good. pull that off. <laughs> right, Square tried to make for spoken. Very hard to do a new IP. Redfall, but anyway, you get the point. It's not just fanboyism, but um, they are really set up in yeah year going into year three of PlayStation, and this is usually the golden times. So yeah, I think it's like going to be a massive show. It's time for like the real bangers to start. Yeah, talking. yeah I mean, normally I wouldn't get people ex excited. I, I know nothing about the show, but my spidey sense if you will is right. way up there i'm like this is probably going to be an amazing show <laughs> is Same. it possible I was that we'll see footage... and i was like oh so excited is it possible we'll see footage of elden rings dlc it's possible i don't think so no that's just my person they are because they already showed you on the anniversary like a concept art um it's not really a playstation exclusive um and there's no reason because it's I, my guess is it's not going to be ready until next March. So, like, why even bother? At why this bother? Point? Yeah, it's more of yeah. a game awards end of the year, okay. probably type thing. I'm just guessing. All right. One more so, question before we move yeah. on. Is there any uh, everybody's talking about uh, Bloodborne remaster, but is there any chance of ever seeing a Bloodborne 2? I think that exists, too. But like, why wouldn't you just remake it like Demon Souls first? Okay. Because 
because it's so good as it is. I mean, yeah, it would I've been be nice waiting. to let more people kind of like experience the world because it's super hard to go back to that game now. I, I think the real problem, Briar, is now that I think about that out loud, is unless you can pry that out of from software's hands and give it to somebody else, they seem pretty busy. That's true. I mean, Elden Ring and Armored Core, and like the idea that they would also like have PlayStation exclusive Bloodborne 2, at least meaning anytime soon. I mean, I definitely think in their roadmap of years from now, right? Let's say three years from now, even maybe it's on their roadmap. I think that makes more sense with a, let's say, a Bloodborne remake happening now. That makes more sense. But anytime soon, I doubt it. I don't know. Anything no. could happen, though. There's no reason not either. I mean, yeah. yeah. But God, I want Elden Ring that. is massive. It's hard for me to imagine that they're working on DLC, brand new IP, it was hugely successful, and the. They, they decided to do a side project with Armored Core, which has got to be a, a much smaller team, but still significant. And then, right, to have something else. I don't know. I, uh, I've i been, the final thing for the PlayStation thing, I've been saying that uh, the next big Monster Hunter will be Tokyo Game Show. But mm. it is possible that they show it on the PlayStation show. And then they give you a deep dive Ooh. into the Tokyo Game Show. So this would, would be, be like World expansion? 2 kind of thing? World 2 or just, you know, whatever is the next mainline yeah. Monster Hunter, right? Oh, the man. big one on the consoles and yeah. Yeah, I'm into that. Wait, so a brand new Monster Hunter, period. It wouldn't be an expansion. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. No, the expansion would just be like a Switch thing, mostly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would like to see so, that. Could be. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it's important to remember with the PlayStation show, they're always, yeah, as much as they can, they're going to focus on exclusivity. Um, Rise so. of the Ronin, then. I know it's coming out in 2024, but if they have some gameplay of Rise of the Ronin or just like a more extensive kind of trailer, that would be exciting, too. Is that supposed to be exclusive? Yes. I believe okay. that one is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Yeah, the... Uh, Team Ninja kind of bounced back and forth between exclusivity and not exclusivity because Neo initially was exclusive and then it came to PC and mm. yeah, they kind of bounced back and forth. I saw, you know, that Neo collection, Neo 1 and 2 on the PlayStation 5. I saw that at GameStop for like $7. I was like, are you Which kidding me? That's great. a steal. <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah. lot of video game for $7. That is a lot of video game. <laughs> Also, GameStop's still open. Just FYI. Yeah. <laughs> that's the real news. That's how I got my PlayStation right away is you could only physically pre-order the PlayStation 5 in GameStop. And I went there and I did it. Right I, would, I didn't do that because I wasn't positive they'd still be open by the time the PlayStation came out. I was like, ah, mm, I'm going to get Best Buy, I think. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm going to take a second to talk about Street Fighter 6. My Street Fighter yeah. 6 minute. Uh, they did the open beta this uh, weekend. That's the first time online play has been available to the masses. Um, but it is an old build. The build, I think, was from, like, last year. So it, there's the, there is the demo that's currently available where you can only play, like, single-player stuff. And then the open beta that you could play online against other people. Uh, but like people noticed right away that like some of the moves seemingly have been updated uh, oh. since then. So, but it was still fun to play Street Fighter Six online against other people. And the netcode is really strong, which is nice for a Street Fighter game. That's not been the case in the past. Um, yeah. You know, it was nice to play some of the other characters because in the be in the beta, there's only two characters playable: Luke and Ryu. Uh, but in the, I'm sorry, in the demo. <laughs> Yeah. Why do they? This is really confusing. It the is demo. Confusing. There's only two characters, but in the online beta, uh, there were several characters. So I, I, I was able to play Kimberly. I was able to play uh, Kyle. I was able to play Rio. I was able to play a few characters. Yeah. Uh, and what's really cool about it is when you enter ranked mode, um, you you are ranked on each character separately. So like, if you get to let's say like a gold rank. It's not based on your account. It's based on each character. So you, if you're a good that's awesome. Ooh, Ryu player, that's but good. you're not so good at Kimberly, like, okay, saying I'm a good Ryu player, let's put a halt on that. That's not true. But I'm a better Ryu player. Let's pretend. <laughs> yeah, let's pretend. So I, when I joined in, I instantly ranked up to gold because it like gives you ten matches to um, placement placement Place, matches. Yeah. Yes, thank you. 
Uh, but with Kimberly, since I was so unfamiliar, it pr- placed me right at iron, which is not as good, Mm-mm-mm. right? It's, it's lower. <laughs> not as good as gold. Yeah, iron it's definitely in the metallurgical gold. scale, it's, <laughs> it's less than. <laughs> it is less. But it's still a good metal. <laughs> it's a solid metal. But I, I thought that was really interesting and no, really nice great. because it doesn't penalize you for trying out new characters, right? It's like you're yeah. not going to lose your rank score. Um, also, the game was really fluid to play online. I, I felt like like much better than Street Fighter V. You know, it good. uses newer rollback net code. It, it just felt really good. And all the new systems are so fun to play with, like the drive impact and all that stuff. So I thought it really went well. Unfortunately, it only lasted a couple of days. It's already over. Uh, but now the game release is only two weeks away. It, it was a good yes. sign for that game. That, I feel I've got good, good feelings about that game. I think it's going to come out big. But did we talk about the Mortal Kombat one trailer? No, that happened uh, yeah. after the Thursday show. or Friday. Yeah. yeah, so that was kind of crazy because they that was huge. That yes, that, that was game huge. is coming right on the heels story wise of Mortal Kombat eleven, and they showed that teaser with the clock skipping from eleven to one. So a lot of people thought, yeah. well, this is going to be a reboot, which makes sense because big spoiler at the end of um, Mortal Kombat 11, Liu Kang kills the God of time and becomes the new God of time and is now going to like start from scratch with like the timeline. So in the trailer, it was very cool because you see Liu Kang is now this like super powerful God. Uh, You're collecting the, the Mortal Kombat contestants and there's this emphasis on, kind of like two man teams teamwork a little bit. And they revealed that there's going to be like an assist character system where you can call in some Cameos. kind of assist. Yeah. And they did. Yeah. mention They also mentioned that those would be different than the playable characters. They will be. Yeah. So that's kind of a cool system. <clears throat> I normally don't play a lot of online mortal Kombat. I, I generally like to play the story cause it's just so much dumb fun. Like these mortal Kombat <laughs> stories are really fun and they're like so bombastic. Yeah. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to this one too. I think this one generated it, it got more views um, for the trailer than st- the Street Fighter Six trailer did like a year ago, which I thought was yeah. yeah that's interesting to frame it that way. I mean, this yeah. is I don't yeah that's interesting. Well, I looked at a I really speaking about on that. that. I saw like a graph showing just basically the popularity of different fighters and mm. fighting games, and Mortal Kombat was at the top. It makes sense to me. So, they released the most games. Very interesting. Like That's they re- true. They release a lot more games, and like I don't know. I play it. I play it for the story, and I really, I like, I really enjoy playing through you that. Play story. more combat it's, for the story. Yeah. I honestly yeah. do. I think it's so fun. Like the stories, I I think are really really crazy. I don't play online Mortal Kombat at all. I save that for uh, Street Fighter, but I really like playing the single. Yeah, player. I mean, we don't we don't know anything about the game. Yet, you know, in the same way that Street Fighter Six came, is coming with, uh, you know, this open, you know, world kind of sector where you rank up. Yeah. It's got online rank. It's got multiple modes. It's like, um, I don't know what MK11 had, Briar, if you remember the modes, but um, oh, there's so many modes. There's like these combat towers. This is like this. Did it remember when they did adventure modes in the past? Like, did it have yeah. anything like that still? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, but I, you know, I wonder will any of that be in there or not but uh but yeah we don't know but the cg trailer you know that it was just a, a tease for what's to come but it's an yeah. amazing trailer yeah that was, I, that was like Sick. it is such a good trailer it just <laughs> looks really good um as yeah. well like in a way that mortal kombat is the most like absurd violent you know but they really make it feel real yeah you mentioned even like game of thrones for final fantasy i feel like it's sort of the game of thrones trailer for um for Mortal Kombat, right? It just feels real, even despite like how ridiculous when yeah. they start doing some fatality stuff in there. Yeah. And then it it's got Fire God Liu Kang to tie all this, to, and it's such a cool reveal. I mean, Eleven moment. came out what like four or five years ago, and it that game That's still great. looks fantastic. Like it just does look absolutely good. Gore- Unless you play it on the Switch, then it looks terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, I can't believe they really? have Mortal Kombat on the Switch. They had everything. <laughs> so 100 million consoles, they'll put anything on there. Right. So, like, to think that this is going to be, like, you know, PS5 and Xbox 4 kind of, like, built for that kind of power, that's exciting. Yeah. It's going to look good. And we, we've seen Tekken. Tekken looks fantastic, too. So, like, Tekken yeah, good. Jesus. Yeah. A lot of really good looking fighters Fighting game right fans now, are all eating well online. this year. Oh, yeah. And yes. they said Mortal Kombat 11 is coming out this year. That's crazy. Right? Yeah. 
that's October. I think it was 18th or 19th. So this year we're getting a new Tekken game, a new Street Fighter game, and a new (laughs) Mortal Kombat game, which is like, that's too much, guys. Pull it back. Can we save one for next year? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that is crazy. Sorry, September 19th. That's right around the corner. If you These games are close. They're really close. Yeah, this yeah. is a b- big year. I mean, it feels like all the stuff that got delayed from COVID is now just going to drop this year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's a little part of that. But um, we also, again, we don't know. That's why I'm curious about the PlayStation conference. But like, we don't really know mm-hmm. what's coming out right in November. Um, we're yeah. still waiting on Call of Duty. That was actually one I threw out there, but I don't know with their current relationships and potential acquisitions with Xbox, if that's being saved for like the Xbox showcase, or we normally would have seen call of duty reveal by now, something's going on. So it's either going to show up at PlayStation or it's going to show up at summer game fest or Xbox showcase. So within the next few weeks, really, we should know what the next it's rumor. Is it modern warfare three or something? Modern is warfare the three. Yep. Rumor? Yeah. That's yeah. right. At this yeah. point, I get Black Ops 3, Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 2, Remake, Modern Warfare Remastered. Like it, <laughs> I would love a new IP at some point, but as we've seen, that has been hard for them to pull off. So I think yeah. they've got the strategy right. And honestly, like the campaign stuff in, in Call of Duty has been really well done um, from that perspective, putting aside even all the other stuff they're doing on the multiplayer modes. Fred, I'd love to ask you a question about, like, you, you, you've been in this industry for so long. I was wondering, like, <laughs> you remember the xbox 360 had like the call of duty kind of franchise lockup right it's like they had like a month of exclusivity on all of the dlcs and all that and a lot of people thought that that Mm. was one of the big reasons the 360 was so popular and Mm. then that moved over to the playstation 4 xbox 360 or xbox one had that terrible press conference where everybody just was like yeah that was a decade ago by the way now that was me. I was Why just looking at that. It that? was. It was a decade. It was 2013. <laughs> Don Metric or whatever out there. Yeah. Do you think that was as important as people made it out to be at the time? Or do you, you know. With which the, the, Xbox, the Call of Duty exclusive. Call of Duty exclusive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Any, I mean, you still see PlayStation doing it. I mean, that's why any like in-game exclusive stuff, betas that are exclusives, and obviously they're locking up full year exclusives. Um, Sony just commented on how they're still like sticking with staggered PC releases where, you know, oh, Mm. somebody mentioned that when we were speculating on my stream about what might be in the PlayStation conference. They're like, what about PC Ghost Tsushima? I'm like, I don't know that they're going to put that front and center. They want you to buy the console and it's going to be all about that. So, yeah, yeah, I do think it's pretty important. Even a month is huge. But um, I mean, that's yeah. That's why Sony's concerned about the acquisition yeah. potential from Microsoft is, you know, all of a sudden becomes a problem. All right. What's next? Whew. Watts has a list. We've, we saw the list on Twitter, so we know the list is there. That's why we keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we talked about a lot of stuff in there i mean watts mentioned lords of the fallen trailer that was probably another big thing that happened since the last show did we talk about it at all that was i'd say that yeah that was since the last show what's yeah. lords of the fallen remind me what so that lords of the fallen real fast history yep you know the game surge yes okay it's that mechanical dark souls those are the people that made lords of the fallen and this game is called lords of the fallen it's not called lords of the fallen 2 and here's why so they were working on that, but then it fell through. So they went on and did the surge. So that team, they tried to find the next team. They started work on it, and this was like years later. That team fell through, made it to a third team. So now they're on the third team, and it is now Lords of Foam, but it's Unreal Engine 5, and it's been in development for three years in um, a newer European studio. I think it's Hex something. Hex Works. Uh, but anyway... They are now like it looks really good. It looks like Dark Souls yeah. Unreal Engine Five. Okay, you know I like all those words. Looks dope. <laughs> the trailer looks really nice. The gameplay looks really nice. I mean, we'll see. But, we'll uh, see. I was sold. Yeah. the The original Lords of the Fallen came out in 2014, and um, it was kind of known to be quite clunky combat wise. There were people that liked it, but it it was known to be clunky. Uh, so that's really what I'm waiting to see is if the combat has been improved upon. I assume so. Hey, this was 2014. It's almost 10 years ago. It's a long yeah. time ago. And, um, and, and there's also been so words. many games. 
And that's why I brought up all those things, right? Like even Dark Souls 2, right, I think is known to be not quite, you know, everybody's yeah. favorite. And that's the same year. And like that's – first yeah, of all, it's 10 years true. ago. But secondly, it is not the same studio at all. Yeah. So no, you, it's, you, it's you, totally different. Even though it shares like a root base, like um, that's the thing. We have no idea what it plays like, not even Good based money. on the original other than the influence. So yeah. Who's the Visually, say? it looks beautiful. They're also doing this really cool thing where they're kind of doing two worlds at the same time. Yeah. And you can switch between like this living world and this not living world, a beyond the grave world. <laughs> yeah. And both look incredible. And the lighting looks incredible. It's, uh, yeah. I, I'm excited to see it in person. And if the combat is good, then this is looking like it's going to be a pretty special game yeah people really. were excited just because yeah like yeah i think because of the history you look at it you're like oh, i don't know yeah you remember lords of the fallen and like but if you look at where it stands it's pretty much a new brand new development on unreal engine 5 inspired by all the works of dark souls and sure lords of fallen before it, but it it looks good it's the crazy thing is seeing we are now we're getting the games on unreal engine 5 they're starting to come out chrono odyssey watts brought up as well that mmo um announcement um that's going to be exclusive yeah. to playstation looks that's coming unreal out on engine everything, 5 isn't it? uh oh maybe that I one think is Chrono odyssey is out on all platforms i don't know why which Sony is actually will... kind of exciting for an mmo because obviously most of them do only come out on pc so right. it releasing right away on consoles and pc is actually really nice i'm hoping it can get like a big player base because of that but that's Unreal Engine 5 was the point as that well. And like all this fun. stuff looks, mm -hmm. it's looking really good. Unreal Engine 5 is obviously seems to be worth the price of entry. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah. Um, real quick, I could touch on the Wild Hearts update. Oh, yeah. Um, so they update the game all the time. They've been adding new monsters and new everything like every month. Um, they've been doing like two patches a week <laughs> to fix PC performance. They've added DLSS now to the game. So performance wise, mm. it's it's doing way, way, way better than before. I at this point, I think it's more like an individual tweaking thing of your system um, and figuring out how to do that. But from what I've heard, people are having a good time with performance kind of across the board now. But, um, so the most recent update, they added another difficulty of monster. So in Monster Hunter, you have, you know, like Elder Dragons, and then you have like Arc Elder Dragons, and then you've got like Apex monsters in Monster Hunter Rise. This is another level of difficulty, adding a new armor set, adding a new weapon path. They've also added things kind of like arenas in Monster Hunter, where you have a set loadout to go and kill a certain monster. That's in there now. They've added ways to different ways to upgrade your armor. And the way that weapons worked as well is so you follow this massive sprawling path and you can go anywhere on it, picking up the skills that you want. But weapons always had an inherited skill or an inherent skill. So you can't change those. Those two, you are stuck with them. There's nothing that you could do. So when you're making your perfect weapon, obviously you'd find the weapon that has the best skills in that part that mm -hmm. you can't change. And then you kind of bounce around to get there to get the skills that you want. Well, now they've added a currency that you can change those. You can roll them into different things. You can also upgrade any weapon to be end game level. So if there's a weapon that you like the look of, skills that you like, you can really go anywhere on that weapon crafting map and make whatever you want, mm. which is mm. really cool. Um, they've, they've also added essentially kind of like a, a mini horde mode for for wild oh, hearts interesting where you can fight you can fight like nine monsters one after the other uh which is crazy because those fights you know they can't they can take a little bit if you don't have a, a good build going so yeah they've they've just been consistently updating it they have a roadmap map coming out pretty soon for future updates but i'm really impressed with what koei tecmo are doing they're just constant adding new stuff to the game just nice. every every month there is something new for you to do which is really nice i gotta get into that game I just been i'm 110 out. hours deep yeah. and i could easily do no like time. another 100 hours I can't i'm sure i would enjoy it too many games <laughs> there's too many right there are uh, does that game run on steam deck no no okay. like that seems like it'd be intense uh real fast actually some dates for you coming up so yeah sony yes. showcase may 24th 1 p.m pacific time that's gonna be exciting summer game fest set to be two hours 
on June 8th. I believe that's around 11 a.m. I got to double check that. Xbox Showcase is June 11th, starting at 10 a.m., followed by Starfield Direct at ele- uh, sometime after that. I don't think we know the Damn, time. They're on just that doing one. their own show for Starfield. Back to they're back. Starfield gets show. its yeah. own big wow. gameplay thing after. Yeah. So that that's on more June 11th. For the Xbox Show, actually. Yeah. Double, mm-hmm. It's a double feature. Full Xbox show, June 11th, starting 10 a.m., and then after, Starfield Direct. And then Ubisoft show is June 12th. So basically, that's like your not E3, but kind of E3, that's which is E3 what I period, referred yeah. to is, honestly, the show, Sony showcase is still basically like a big E3 that's a type part of it, yeah. showcase, you know. So that's exciting. And then, Briar, I don't think we talked about it. I know you got to run, but um, the ROG Ally, the new oh handheld, I think mm-hmm. they showed that after. That comes out on June 13th, right oh, after wow. all these shows. The high-end version comes out. That's $700. Okay. But then the low end version, I think, is for the Q4. That's going to be around, uh, maybe it's 600 or rumored to be around there. But does that interest you guys at all? The ROG Ally looks definitely. Nice. I think that that thing is a really cool piece of tech. But the one thing Steam that Deck I, competitor, yeah, Steam Deck competitor, which I love my Steam Deck. Like I really, I, I like it more than I thought I would when I initially bought it. It's just it's so useful for all those PC games that you know you just want to sit back on the couch and kind of you know it's it's really nice. The thing about the ROG, though, is that uh, I was watching the Digital Foundry review of it, and they had some complaints about, you know, this thing has a lot more power than the Steam Deck, which makes sense. It's more expensive. Mm-hmm. But because it's running Windows, possibly, it seems to go through battery life even faster, and it doesn't mm. necessarily show, like, in frame rates, the power that it, it holds over the Steam Deck. Oh, oh yeah. It's not showing... Yeah, it, it's through in the final out. Like they're, you're saying right. they're kind of neck and neck, despite despite right now, the despite extra power that extra the, power. the 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 mm. the Asus unit has, which maybe you know maybe that's just needs software optimization because it is running you know full boat Windows. Yeah, on yeah, it, right. So like, there's you know there's some extra weight that Windows brings along with it that I think definitely Steam has done a really good job because they kind of. You know, they really streamline the software for the Steam Deck, and they continue to improve that software constantly. Yeah, so, I mean, it, at a minimum, right, I think it's still within a $100 shot, right, of the price. How much is Steam Deck? It's Steam Deck, I think the most expensive one is 600 Oh, the most expensive. Right? So they even have a I, – I don't remember. I, I don't have one, so. Yeah. But the, the it's least roughly – The one is, what, 350 Yeah, I should have looked before I asked that. But – um. But, I mean, in short, it's still within range. Yeah. Actually, I'm looking right now. $400 for the 64 gigabyte version. Right. Um, I'd have to see ROG Ally. I think the high-end version has, yeah, significantly much more than that. Yeah. But, yeah, the I think that's what it competes with is the 649, 512 gigabyte edition. Okay. So $650 650. for 512 gigabytes. And the, Steve, uh, the Asus one, is, is it 699 or is it 799 I think it's it is six ninety nine. Six ninety nine. So it's That's really the not the current that one price, actually. Yeah, Q four again. Will the 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 so I think it's five ninety nine version comes out. Okay. Around then, it's also got a full ten eighty p screen. People say the screen is yeah. a lot better than on the Steam Deck. Five hundred twelve gigabytes, and then the other big thing that. You know, and that's where I think there will be some preference stuff. It's got Windows, which also yeah. I think is going to be more like just bootstrapped, like doing stuff with it that is a little maybe harder to do on Steam. I mean, yeah. I, I don't do that, so I'm making an assumption. But then um, it's really quiet, apparently. Very quiet. Yeah, it's quiet. got two fans that are like, yeah, they got like some cool. kind of like fluid bearing in them. That, oh, that's mm. awesome. Yeah, so it's quiet. That was it's also more compact big. than the Steam Deck. Uh, it's also... From what I understand, more comfortable to hold, possibly. Yeah, that's. I'm weight. wondering. And also, like Steam Deck has a lot of extraneous controls that I think are just kind of like, you know, I'm sure some people use those touch pads. I think they're just in the way all the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> it looks pretty good. Um, and as good. a reminder, right, Asus is the pretty much leader. I mean, I have to check by sale. So, but they're a, a, a leader in like making sick motherboards and all these you know components yeah. they make really nice monitors this is not like a random company taking a stab at it um so they've certainly got a lot of hardware distribution and manufacturing experience and like it look it looks nice it's got rgb and everything on it and yeah i don't know why it's white though i feel like it's immediately going to be the dirtiest 
Like, We've seen pictures it's gonna be of your so PS5 hard. controller. <laughs> okay, you gave me that. That was an extreme example. All right. I didn't notice. I didn't notice at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if that. I don't know if you can get it in a black edition yet or anything. I don't I know either. Probably, I think it probably looks just wait cool for now. It looks nice. Yeah, it looks good. Um, yeah, I, I think it's pretty cool. You mentioned la last week too that like you know having Windows on it just opens the door to Game Pass, which is a huge value add. Oh yeah, it is for sure. Yeah. Um, real quick, games that are coming out this week. Um, there's actually League of Legends game coming out this week. So League of Legends Riot works with these other companies to make spin-off single player games of the lore of their characters. Um, this one comes out tomorrow. It's called Convergence and it's about Echo, which if you've seen um the if you've seen Arcane, you'll know Echo from Arcane. So that's all the characters that you kind of know from Arcane, like Jinx is in there. You've got Warwick in there. Um, and it's a adventure 2D platformer, which looks like something really? I'd be pretty into. Yeah. yeah. That looks okay. like something I'd be into. So I'd, I'd like to check that out. That comes out tomorrow. And I'll then some other ones. And then not play it just like every other game. <laughs> it's, it's 30 bucks. I'm sh it's on Steam. So. I'm sure it probably works on the Steam Deck based on what I'm looking at by looking at it. Um, but yeah, I want to check that out. That gameplay looks like something I'd really enjoy. Their other game that they had, which was on like two weeks ago, um, is apparently also really good. I, uh, I'm i really impressed with the, what they're doing. Like they, they with oh, Valorant and with that new fighting game that they are working on. And like, mm -hmm. they're just going to like, they're going to own esports like in its entirety. <laughs> like they're just going to own it. <laughs> They will, yeah. I I really yeah. want uh, season two of that show to come out too. That was really good. It'll be there eventually, one day. Um, and then are we ending the show? Are we done? Okay, we yeah, we can end it. To end the show, I would like to end with a quote, um, <laughs> which I think is really funny. Um, so this is from Final Fantasy 16 producer Naoki Yoshida, and he was asked. Um, what makes a Final Fantasy game a Final Fantasy game? And he said, my answer is simple. You need to have the best story. You need to have the best graphics. You need to have the best battle system. You need to have a lot of content. You need to have the chocobos. You need to have the moogles. You need to have great sound. And that makes Final Fantasy. And if you're missing even one of them, the fans will hate you forever. <laughs> Hence Final Fantasy 15. <laughs> <laughs> you're muted, friend. <laughs> simple. It's simple. Have yeah, the best of everything, Just and the, the chocobos best. are the boogles. Yeah, exactly. And I thought chocobos. that was really great. Sprinkle yeah. in some chocobos. <laughs> you got I love, I love that answer because they're like, you know, there's a lot of debate online about what makes a Final Fantasy game, and he's like, the best of everything plus chocobos and boogles. Duh. Obviously, it's very simple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fran is still muted. He yep, apparently broke the internet Fran again. Yeah. Damn. Fran's been showing his ass online. Someone looked at it. Internet broke, and now we can't talk. That just makes the internet better. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> Fran, put your butt away. <laughs> we'll see you next week uh, with another episode. This was a this is a crazy episode. This felt different and good. Right? Different. <laughs> different, but good. All right, guys. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye. We'll see you on Thursday. Bye-bye.